Live from New York City, it's The Cube at Big Data NYC 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, WAN Disco, with support from EMC, MarkLogic, and Teradata. Now, here is your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to Big Data NYC, everybody. Really pleased to have Sean Conley on from uh, Horton Works, a longtime guest, and Chris Toogood from Teradata. Welcome, gentlemen, to theCUBE. Thanks for having us, Dave. It's good to be here. So, really interesting things going on, and you guys are at the heart of it, right? Uh, Chris, I remember when Teradata first came out. I was at IDC at the time, and you guys came to the to IDC, the, the big you know, dog and pony show, and we're like, wow, this is cool stuff. It's really going to going to change the way in which people look at data. That was really the first time I personally started to think a lot about data and its, and its business impact, and it's been amazing to see you know, the run that, that Teradata's have. You know, meanwhile, uh, you've got you know, Hortonworks and all this big data and Hadoop thing going on, and the two worlds are colliding in a really interesting way, and your two companies have collided or partnered in a really interesting way. So, Sean, let me start with you. Give us the update on, on what's going on with with Hortonworks and you know your perspective on the relationship with Teradata. Sure, yeah, I mean, it's funny, I just passed my uh, third year anniversary at Hortonworks, so we're just a little over three years old. I joined shortly after the founding. Old F man, right Three now. times seven <laughs> is 21 years. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, years, I don't know what, yeah. Yeah, or, well, I don't know what elephant years are. <laughs> um, but you know, since our founding, it was really, uh, you know, how does Hadoop fit into a broader uh, data architecture? Um, and early on, I mean, uh, really out of the gate, we. Uh, formed a partnership with uh, Teradata. Um, I think a bit of it is the roots on um, the uh, deep engineering optimization work mm -hmm. that you guys have done in your systems. And how do we take that and extend the data under management um, so that you can get a more, you know, sort of unified experience for customers. Fast forward to today and we, we kind of continue to execute together, um, you know, in appliances, software, deployments, et cetera, in customer sites. Um, you know, like I said, the three years have gone by pretty quickly. Um, the, uh, where the market is right now is it's, excel it's accelerating. Um, I think even particularly be beyond the strata Hadoop where all the other conferences, I think Hadoop is uh, really firmly on uh, a lot of CIOs' radar screens. So it's pretty exciting. So Chris, uh, you know, when you're as successful as a company like Teradata is, everybody wants a piece of your hide, right? And so <laughs> you got big customer base, a, a lot of success. Uh, but you know, the difference between, uh, my observation, between companies today and the ones, let's say the mini computer guys, I'm from the East Coast, and I saw Denial, you know, Ken Olson, Unix's snake oil, Ann Wang, all PCs who needs those things. Companies today um, embrace the change. Mm -hmm. um, they see it coming, they're not in denial. Teradata is a good example of that. You guys have made acquisitions, mm -hmm. you have strong partnerships. What's the conversation like sort of strategically inside of, of Teradata and how are you bringing that to the marketplace and, and your customers? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great comment, right? You, you can't stand still in this marketplace. And, and clearly with our acquisitions of uh, Think Big and being able to have consulting services around you know, open source and being able to get value from data, and then our acquisition of uh, Revlytics, very specifically around Loom to be able to do you know, integrated metadata, uh, data lineage, and data wrangling all in a self-service uh, UI, and then also our acquisition of Hadap, yeah. right? really a pioneer in doing uh, you know, SQL on top of Hadoop. And so I think all of this is about helping to extend into a broader analytical ecosystem. Because there's not one system can do it all. Uh, there's a lot of very unique analytic engines out there, you know, file types, economics, in terms of how people want to store and analyze data. And, and really the vision that Teradata has is we want to help orchestrate that. Help orchestrate it all together in a way that makes it transparent for the user, but enables them to really take advantage of all the power of all those different uh, systems out there to get the best insight against the broadest set of data. Well, it's interesting, when we survey our customer base and ask them wh wh what kind of tools they're using in their big data deployments, the number, number one and number two is data integration in their, uh, their existing enterprise data warehouse. So, you know, a lot of people ask us, oh, is my data warehouse going away? You know, maybe, you know, 100 million years from now, but so it's fundamental. Um, you know, at the, same, at the same time, customers are trying to figure out, okay, where do I, place my bets, where do I put the investment? So, Sean, what are you seeing uh, and what are you advising customers, um, whether it's R&D stuff on Hadoop, whether it's you know, real production, what are you seeing out there and what are you advising? 
So um, the successful deployments, and this is really accelerated not only through 2013 mm -hmm. but through 2014, is those folks who are focused on the new forms of data and maybe blending it with some of their existing forms of data for, for either enriched existing analytics apps or net new um, apps around sensor data or you know, a lot of these new forms of data, they're the ones who, from a Hadoop embracement perspective, um, have sort of repeatable momentum and it moves very quickly, right? Um, so while I, you know, uh, it's always interesting to talk about the death of this, the death of that, what the customer wants is they want an optimized architecture that gets the data into the right system um, for, for the right application and right sort of delivery to the end user. Um, and they also want to figure out these new types of data that are flowing in, like how do I optimize my supply chain, right? And you might have vehicles with sensors that are part of that supply chain or um, you know, pharm you know, uh, pharmaceuticals that are delivered to the dr drug stores and are you getting you know, sort of the, the right meds into the right locations to he you know, head off outbreaks, which were you know, mm -hmm. seeing just very real and dynamic. You know, so it's you know, optimizing supply chain, optimizing sort of the, uh, around the customer, um, you know, single view of product, those types of things. There's new forms of data and existing data that they're trying to figure out how they bring that together to unlock new apps that they weren't mm -hmm. able to do before. And you know, fr from our founding, we were like, this is all about how do you maximize your data under management so you can actually achieve that goal, right? And, and that comes from an integrated architecture, right, at the end of the day. It isn't one system or one product, it's, it's actually an architectural approach. Chris, I wonder if you could add to that. Um, customers tell us, you know, we, uh, data warehouse environment's a challenge. We, we're, we, we always, anytime Intel comes out with the, the faster chip, we got to throw it at the, the, at the problem. Um, data ingestion is just, uh, just amazingly unpredictable. Uh, our, our budgets aren't going up, uh, but the data is rising like, like crazy. Um, so how are you helping customers sort of address that problem? And it relates obviously to what you're doing with Hortonworks and, and, and other parts of your ecosystem, but I wonder if you could talk about that directly. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great comment. I mean, if you look at 16, 17 years ago, Teradata really embraced this idea about an enterprise data warehouse, right? right? And you bring your transaction data together and you manage it in a way that you have that consistent, shareable, governed data across the enterprise. And then this onslaught of what we all talk about, big data, right? New data and new data types. It's very funny because I hear people say, well, aren't you, aren't you concerned because all the sensor data and the web data, you know, going in Hadoop and that's going to take it off of Teradata? Well, the reality is Teradata always had data that was there that was available for high value workloads in which lots of users needed consistent concurrency against its environment. So for us, and it's exactly what Sean said, it's all about bringing all of this together in a scalable way. And, and we do it through our unified data architecture. And our unified data architecture includes Hadoop and our partnership with Hortonworks. It includes Aster and our solution for being able to do you know, discovery and discovery analytics and Teradata for being able to share data in a very you know, governed, cleansed way across the enterprise. And then one of the things that we do with the unified data architecture is we glue it together through Teradata Query Grid. And we pioneered this with joint engineering with Hortonworks. Uh, originally it was going against the uh, H catalog using SQL H, and we've expanded that now, which is our query grid platform, which can push down processing. So if you've got a lot of you know, sensor data and you want to do some aggregation and process, process that, inside of Hortonworks and then take some of those results and combine it back up in the warehouse where I have all my warranty information, where I have my customer service information, where I have you know, people hitting it consistently all the time. It's a great marriage and it helps companies scale in an economic way yet get the value across the unified data architecture. It actually accelerates the adoption as well because it actually provides a, a more of a unifying way for uh, in a consistent way to get at that data. I want to talk about partnerships mm -hmm. uh, because in an exploding market like this where you got you know huge number of vendors coming out you got some guys at the, the core everybody wants to do partnerships and you know, John Furrier calls some of the partnerships he calls them Barney partnerships you know and others have substance how do we parse through that how do we understand which ones have substance I've heard uh, joint engineering joint go to market can you talk about what makes a, a, a substantive partnership that's going to deliver ROI versus one that's sort of, yeah, let's do a press release. I wonder if you could maybe talk about that a little bit. Sure, I mean, I think in the early days of Hadoop, a lot of it was around you know, connectors that would move data from systems mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Not a very optimized 
uh, experience, right? When you're talking about things like query grid that are intelligent about, all right, we know this data is in Hadoop and I can push it down and get the benefit of the bargain of leveraging Hadoop for what it does and pull it back in a familiar way. Um, that's a much more sophisticated um, technological experience that actually requires engineers from Teradata, engineers from Hortworks to actually roll up their sleeves, create multi-year roadmaps and start delivering on this stuff. It doesn't happen overnight, right? Um, and so when we talk about sort of deep engineering work, it's, you know, what's, what's next to come, right? How do, we, how do we begin to apply some of the principles that Teradata's had, uh, you know, from workload management and hot, warm, cold uh, data management and uh, extend those same principles uh, into the broader sort of data fabric that Hadoop uh, exists in? They're really interesting engineering conversations that um, can happen, and, and that type of partnership uh, that we have, uh, you know, provides the vehicle for doing that. So right. Chris, I wonder if you can again add to that. I mean, what, what makes this relationship substantive? I mean, convince me. Let's say I'm a skeptic. Oh yeah, just another, another deal. Why is the yeah, Teradata and Hortonworks partnership different? And I think it's, it's absolutely what Sean said, but I think it even goes beyond, right? It's about engineering, it's about go-to-market models, it's about sales alignment, it's about uh, you know, joint marketing as we're bringing it to the environment. But I think one of the biggest keys is the, is the engineering. And it's not just doing it once, it's continually looking at what's going on in the marketplace and looking about how we can do uh, joint engineering to bring products to market. And some of the examples of this uh, certainly is Query Grid. There's other examples where we've built in Viewpoint, uh, where you know, Teradata can use a single plane of glass to look at both the Teradata Data Warehouse, the Aster Discovery Platform, and Hortonworks all in a single environment to make it easy for users to manage that complete foundation. We've worked with uh, Teradata Vital Infrastructure to add Hortonworks into our appliance so that we can deliver a platform to our customers that's ready to run, um, you know, up and running right away, and one-stop shopping. So if a customer wants to come to Teradata and wants to say, hey, I want to get all the support for the complete UDA, then we can do that, and we work with our partners, uh, Hortonworks, on the back end to make sure we have that linkage for level four and five. So I think it's that tight integration throughout the supply chain of what you're doing and how you're going to market that really makes a significant difference. And whether they want to consume it in integrated appliance with everything or software or subscription, being able to you know, uh, sort of engage through Teradata for that relationship where they pr provide that face to the customer in a familiar way I think is important. And that, that it was one of the things I'd point out. Th three years at this at Hortonworks, that was a founding principle was how do we you know, partner with the data center uh, you know, uh, players in a way that um, the end customer who, um, tr you know, trusts that vendor um, can procure this new capability in a way that's um, very familiar and um, sort of de-risks it from I their perspective. I think that's a great point. Um, and, and last week, uh, together we announced the Teradata Cloud for Hadoop. So it's not just an appliance model. If people want to be able to go up into the cloud and, you know, test Hadoop, bring Hadoop up in a cluster. They don't want to have to worry about getting all the data scientists and doing the managed services. Teradata's put an offer together where they can do that. They can put Hadoop in the cloud, they can have Teradata in the cloud, they can do hybrids of it. So we're working together to bring multiple deployment models to Cl the market. Cloud meets big data. So, so yeah. um, you guys have been down at the, the show at Strata and Hadoop World. Uh, other announcements? Anything else that you that Yeah, you we, announced, uh, we announced Teradata Loom uh, mm -hmm. 2.3. This was from our acquisition of Revolitics. And, right. and like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a key foundation, especially as we start to see more companies looking at deploying Hadoop in a data lake you know, type of model. Because the more you have different disparate data types in there, you need to understand lineage, you need to understand governance, you need to be able to do wrangling and bring it together so that that data is accessible to the broader uh, enterprise throughout the UDA. So we're excited about uh, that product that we brought to market. Excellent, and, and you guys announcing anything here? Yeah, so here? yesterday we uh, announced the Hortonworks Data Platform 2.2. Yeah. Um, a lot of new capabilities in there, not the least of which is uh, Things like HBase, Accumulo, Storm, and others, and Spark are on Yarn, right? So they're all integrated in, um, delivered uh, easily. Um, and um, I suspect you'll be talking to our Microsoft counterparts about a uh, capability out of the box on uh, uh, backing up to Azure Blob Store um, from uh, on-prem clusters and automating that process. So there's a lot of cloud goodness as well as uh, capabilities that are in the platform, but a very significant release. Um, a lot of new tech. You mentioned Accumulo, two, two years ago, two, the two Hadoop summits ago, it wasn't mm -hmm. two, quite two years ago, but two Hadoop summits ago, uh, security really started to, 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 to 
get front page yep. you know, in this world. And, yep. you know, before that, nobody was paying attention to it, which is a signal to us that, hey, this is getting real. Yes. <laughs> well, and even like, uh, it's interesting to see the dynamics, because you provide both Apache HBase and Apache Accumulo, yeah. and the HBase community has added a bunch of security capabilities in there. So it's, it's really interesting enablement of choice. And then um, our acquisition of XA Secure earlier in the year uh, is manifesting itself as Apache Ranger. Mm -hmm. um, so that's all gone, submitted to Apache. Um, you know, centralized authorization. Um, again, security is paramount for adoption, so. Thanks for the contributions. Um, yeah. All right, we gotta leave it there, we gotta right. go. Gentlemen, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It's great to see you. All right, thanks, thanks Dave. Dave. Appreciate your time. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. This is theCUBE. We're live at Big Data NYC. We'll be right back.